Welcome to Grand Canyon's historic village. People have been living in this area for over 10,000 years. And while a lot has changed, people living on the edge hasn't. Now, where did it begin? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Not many of the buildings that tell this story still stand today. The Whole Brothers Cabin is one of the few. Today, we're gonna learn about the untold stories of some of the first tourist settlements right here at Grand Canyon that started in the Kaibab National Forest. What is known as the Kaibab National Forest today has been home to First Nations such as the Havasupai, Hopi, Navajo, Wallapai, and others for thousands of years. And with a little exploration, it's easy to understand why. This microclimate on the Coconino Plateau is filled with strong and mighty ponderosa pine trees, side canyons that offer water and shelter, and a diverse bit of wildlife for those in need of food. And the incoming miners, fur trappers, and traders realized its importance. The Hull brothers moved to the South Rim in the 1880s, first herding cattle and then sheep. They built this home, barn, and shed. And while they were not seeking the rich minerals the canyon might have to offer them, they met many who were. One of those first pioneers who made their way to this area of the canyon was John Hans, a legendary storyteller and fabled canyon creator. Hans and others like Pete Berry and Martin Buglin began to not just mine, but homestead these lands. And when the mining proved to be fruitless, they began selling tours to those who were willing to make the arduous wagon ride to the South Rim. Eventually, the buck would stop right here at these railroad tracks. In 1901, when the luxury of rail travel was introduced to Grand Canyon, the would-be village out near the whole cabin came to an almost complete halt. And soon, the Fred Harvey Company, Boucher, O'Neill, the Kolbs, Burkamps, Havasupai, and others would shape the community that lives on the edge today. 